Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and the sort of video I don't normally make. Um, what am I talking about? We're going to be looking at a product. Um, we're going to build it, paint it and see what it's like when it's finished. So what am I talking about? Well, as you can probably tell from the title of, uh, of the video, it's, it's this. This is the, the SDK of Z222 or 223 from, uh, from Warlord Games. Now, originally this was part of the Gentleman's War starter box, but in recent ones they've... Um, made it available as a, a sort of a separate purchase along with the 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 the, the, the humber from that kit as well and um, i was very very kindly given given this uh by my gaming buddy ian uh, for my birthday cheers mate awesome awesome present so i just thought i'd because it's a relatively new kit i just thought i'd have a bit of a look at it and uh, build it um give you my thoughts on the build and then go away and paint it and show you what it's done it's what it's not going to be it's not going to be a, a 90 minute video of me cutting stuff off sprues and sticking myself with super glue and you know it's not gonna be that kind of video essentially it's gonna have a bit of a look um, and i'll give you my thoughts as i go through so here we have the sdk said 222 and 223 um so obviously there's nothing in the box because nobody wants to see me opening plastic bags with a craft knife but this is this is the kit so you can build either the 222 or the 223 i'm gonna be building the 222 for my um deutsch africa core project so we're going to be using uh, some desert colours to, to paint this. Um, as you can see from the um, the booklet here, um, it looks like quite a simple build. Now you can you can either do it with the um, the hatch open or closed. I'm going to be keeping mine closed, <laughs> but there's, there there is a, a bit of an interior, so it's it's going to require a little bit of painting as I build because I'm a bit of a completionist and I can't stand unpainted parts <laughs> in the interior of models. Um, but yeah, having looked through, it seems to be quite a simple build. Uh, and the, the actual gun is going to be the most complicated part because there's non, the sort of moving parts on it to get it into the um, into the hole. Now, as, as people know, I'm not a fan of moving parts on, on war gaming vehicles, so I'll have to, I'll cross that particular bridge when I get to it. But yeah, standard warlord um instructions there's, there's not a lot um to it so let's have a bit of a look at the um the sprues themselves here we go so again it's it's, it's quite light on on bits and pieces on the sprue um it, it seems to be a fairly simple kit but um we'll um we'll learn <laughs> whether it's simple or not when i get to the build but as you see it's your standard warlord games kit really Good, good, good level of detail. Um, crisp sculpts, and here's the actual holes. You can get an idea of how big this is going to be. I'm actually really looking forward to this. I've always wanted to do it. I've never, I've never built or painted a 222, so I am looking forward to this. And I'm not a fan of resin models, so I've been waiting for a long time for this kit to come out in plastic. There we go. What I did notice as well is the uh, the, the the chassis section <laughs> isn't as uh, as detailed as the Puma. Which is just as well because I'm still traumatized from building that kit. Um, but that's that's the that's so you get two sprues. Again, yeah, what you need really. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting little build. Like I say, it's not the not the biggest of, of armored cars, but it's gonna be um, it's gonna be an interesting little build. Speaking of interesting, uh, where is it? So yeah, with the, with the, the normal gubbins you get. Look at that. It, Wall of Games have started giving out order dice with their vehicles. What a nice little touch. Of course, you get your usual uh, stats card and there'll be some decals in there as well. So, enough enough waffle from me. I'm going to go away, um, pour myself some Vimto, put on some metal and build it. So when I come back, it will be the finished build. I'll talk about any issues I encounter along the way. So, see you in the next part. So here we have it. This is the model built. Um, didn't take too long, just under, I'd say an hour or so to put this together. And for the most part, it went together really well. The instructions are clear. Um, pieces fitted really well. Everything was where it should have been. And it all went together really rather, um, really rather well. Uh, you might see a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of super glue over it. I had a bit of an accident. I got super glue all over my finger. And transfer it to the model. Uh, I shall be removing that with a craft knife as soon as possible. Um, the only thing, I, um, the only bit I would be careful about is the bit that's on screen now. So this is where you actually put the auto cannon um, and the coax into the uh, into the, the the turret. So you drop it down vertically 
then drop it horizontally and then you know you can put the lid on or not uh, I, I chose to cover the whole thing up um, yeah that's the only the only bet I would say dry fit it a lot and really work out what you're doing before you go sort of um, gluing things in place um, but apart from that no really really enjoyable build um, really crisp details went together really well and I'm really looking forward to painting this so what's the next stage so what I'm going to do is go away and actually paint this now I do my paint my painting vehicles in two stages so I'm going to go ahead and do a very very basic paint job this will just be um, sort of the main colors wash dry brush tires bit of details on there I'll come back and show you what it looks like with just the basic paint job that's just table it's tabletop ready um, you can certainly put that onto the tabletop at that stage uh, what I then do is go and do a bit of weathering a bit of um, you know, pigments some um, some paint chipping uh, try and dig out some stowage from the bits box make it a bit more of a, a unique and individual looking vehicle so that's going to be the next stage I'm going to go away and do a very very basic paint job um, yeah so I shall see you in the next part of the video well that is the armoured car painted so what I've done is I've done a very very basic paint job this is this is what you just what you call tabletop standard very very quick to paint um, yeah but I think it looks it looks the part I mean, I'd certainly be happy to put that on the tabletop uh, it does need basing I think that will <laughs> um, yes this will be based for those with a nervous disposition there will be basing uh, vehicles in this in this video so I just thought I'd uh, I'd get that one out there straight away <clears throat> but that'll be the next stage so what do we have here so this has been painted um in the following colors so what i do is i normally with, with vehicles like this especially desert ones i'll just base in in, in any type of brown uh, doesn't matter you know the, the shade brown works and then what i do is i add a mixture of um so it'll be on the screen now vallejo uh, khaki and vallejo green ochre now i don't have any set ratio or set mixture level for this I do this because I don't want all my vehicles, all my, especially all my desert vehicles, to have to be the same colour because they wouldn't be. They'd all they'd have been there for different lengths of time in the in the desert. There's the weathering conditions, there's the the use, there's the the wear and tear. So they're all going to have a different a different shade, a different hue within their armour. So I don't re I'm not really precious about the um, the combination that I use. But what I do is I mix that together, and then I just get it all over the the whole the whole of the vehicle. Then once that's dry, I mix up a wash. Um, using um, these colours, so we've got Vallejo um, what sepia wash, and I mix this with Citadel's Nolan oil. Again, the wash changes. There's no, there's no set formula, no set ratio, or anything of that nature. Um, it's just, it's just really hit and miss. But I think it adds to the randomness and the, the sort of the realism of, of these vehicles. And what I do, I, I splash that literally all over the vehicle. And I tend to leave it to, to dry overnight so it's fully dried, it's fully settled in all those recesses. You're going to have no, um, no sort of semi-wet areas for the next stage. Um, while we're on colours, the, the, the tyres, I've just painted these in my usual um, Vallejo uh, Black Grey. This is my standard um, standard colour for any tyres. What you notice that on the next stage, the dry brush, I'll just pop that over the tyres as well. Um, gives a dusty look, but in the next stage, when, when I add the weathering, it's going to be a bit more pronounced. Um, so once that once that wash is fully dried, I then dry brush using this, which is Army Painter Skeleton Bone. Um, now this is what this is. I take my time over this. I mean, I know it's easy with dry brushing to really go sort of really go at it what, what I don't want is really strong um, brush strokes on there so what I do is I, the whole vehicle is, is dry brush but quite judiciously uh, so I use quite quite level strokes um, and I just aim for those those really raised areas because desert I found, I found painting quite a few desert vehicles the, the the paint scheme can be quite quite dull at the end of, at the end of the process so I think a good dry brush like that really helps to to bring out the detail um, and again like I mentioned before I've dry brushed the tyres but they'll, they'll be getting um, a, a coating of pigments in the next in the next stage um, so everything's been dry brushed uh, with uh, army painted skeleton bone um, and that and then so I don't know I've painted the um, the auto cannon and the the coax machine gun that's just any 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 of your metallics will do for that so I, I use um, Vallejo gunmetal grey 
uh, is it gunmetal grey or just gunmetal? Um, but it, it works. Uh, and then I, 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 with that I apply a wash of just straight null oil over that. Then what I do for the last stage of this is using the same wash that I, um, that I used originally. So the, the sepia and the non oil. I'll go in and what I'll do is air all the edges, so all the all little recesses there, I'll just I'll just paint um a bit of the wash along along those edges, along in, in the recesses. And this just it brings out the details like like I mentioned, it these can be quite dull. Um so it is important to bring out the details on these. Um with, especially with desert vehicles, so that's what I've done. Is I've just at any sort of where panel meets panel or there's any recesses or just around the outside of you know panels like that on the, the water bottles on the the you know, the exhaust pipes there the panels in the back um, and also the mesh grill on the turret as well that gets a good a good a good wash of that as well uh, and that that is pretty much it what you've not, what you may not notice as well I always put the decals on um, prior to the wash so I've just used a few that came with the kit so I've got the number plate there a couple of the the um, cross emblems and I, I just normally put some identity some vehicle identifier markings on this i've got a g and a two there but that's it so what i'll do what or what i'd be happy to do with this is, is pop it on a base and that that'd be you know it's, it's tabletop standard it would it would really work on the tabletop but the rest of the vehicles in my um deutsche africa core project are heavily weathered and this will be no exception so what i'm going to do is go away and weather this in two different ways the first will be to add um sort of chipping so it's, it's the desert, there's going to be lots of wear and tear, the initial base coat is going to get chipped off, there's going to be the exposed metal uh, underneath, uh, and that's going to be done using the um, like a sponge method, I'm going to use the sponge just to, just to dab on some, um, some weathering on there. Um, if you want to see how it's done it's to um, an expert level, check out Sonic Sledgehammer, he's done an excellent tutorial on desert weathering uh, i'll pop a link uh, to, to um troy's video in the description below um but he, he he's got it nailed and that i i used his tutorial to do the, the the weathering that i do um on on all my desert vehicles and the last stage will be you know a, a bit of um weathering pigments just to signify dust and dirt and grime and it gives it sort of that 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 lived in sort of look and then the the final stage which i know everybody loves everybody looks forward to is base in the vehicle um but that that's just a it's just a base and, and i use um textured textured paint from vallejo as the desert as the desert base but i'll get more into that in the next stage so i shall go away and i shall take this to the next level with a bit of weathering so i shall see you all in the next stage and there we have it it's all done it's all weathered all based all completed and it was really enjoyable a really nice build um, paint job this very very like I say just an enjoyable little kit to build um, easy to put together pretty easy to paint uh, you don't need to do all the weathering like this like I said in the, in the last section it was perfectly perfectly good tabletop standard the way that I painted it but I do like applying weathering so as you'll see I've I mentioned I was going to apply two types of weathering so the first is the the chips and the scrapes uh, all over the vehicle um, like I said in the last the last section, uh, I, I used the um, the tutorial from Sonic Sledgehammer for doing this. An excellent tutorial. Um, if I've managed to record it, probably there should be some footage on the screen now of me uh, applying the weathering uh, to the armored car. Um, it's quite really simple. Uh, it's just a case of less is more. What you don't want to be doing is splashing it all over every last inch of the vehicle to make it look as if it was completely unroadworthy. Um, but I think just some natural. Um, natural places so where where the paint's chipped off you know for use on sharp edges uh, dents scrapes etc i think that that it's it works really well and it gives that good lived in look without making it like a complete and a total wreck which is certainly not what you want to achieve and the second part was adding weathering pigments it's quite subtle you can't really see them actually on the armored car itself but i've applied it to the tires uh, to represent dust and grime and I guess I just think it looks it looks really quite well. And last thing, as as always, I base all my vehicles. This is based on a piece of MDF with some um, kitty litter rocks and some tufts to finish it. And there we go. That is the finished 
SDKFZ222 for my Deutsch Africa car. And a great addition it will be also. Um, I can't remember if I, if I mentioned this at the start of the video, but this was actually a birthday present uh, off my um, off my good pal Ian. So cheers bro, thanks for that. Excellent birthday present. And I hope I've done it justice, I really do. But there we go. Uh, what I'm going to do is pop this on the turntable so you can have a better look at it 360 degrees as it spins around. But I hope you find the video um, helpful if you're building one of these in the very near future. Uh, if you've got any comments about this or bolt action or gaming in general, uh, just pop them down below and I'll certainly respond to all comments and questions. But until then, I'll see you in the next video. So thanks for watching. Me and I roll well and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.